Hello, and welcome to Shark Baby, where you'll know it's us by the slow probing sensation in your humor glance. Just relax. This will only take a minute. It's today, 2007. I'm a trepid news hound, Lee Camp. I'm barely legal reporter, Liz Mealy. Sit back. Pour yourself a glass of Merlot. And enjoy the nuanced interplay of satire and poor taste. Here, Shark Baby News. First up, area man's birdwatching hobby slowly strays towards boys. Yeah, Arthur Beale of Minneapolis, Minnesota has found that he enjoys watching boys even more than his previous hobby. The 61-year-old insists that his infatuation is a strictly empirical interest in the supple, blossoming anatomy of young nubile boys. According to Beale's own logbooks, in the past four months he has spotted seven different avian specimens and 452 boys. And moving on, Martin Luther King Day, celebrated by whites and blacks, separately. A little over a month ago, the holiday dedicated to the memory of the great civil rights leader and racial unifier Martin Luther King Jr. was celebrated by both black and white people in completely separate locations. Strikingly separate locations. Said Brad McAuliffe, an African American, quote, We had a great little barbecue. I would have invited white people over if I was friends with any white people. But they're always wearing lame-ass clothes and stuff. Well, my friend Dwayne came, and he's a quarter Native American and dresses like an idiot. Does that count? On the other hand, Barrett Kliegman, a Caucasian and devoted racist, bitterly took the afternoon off work. Kliegman said, quote, I was glad I got to spend some extra time with my family. We ate on the porch together and begrudgingly thanked Dr. King for the free time. Another white woman we spoke with said, quote, I think it's a wonderful holiday for the entire country. It's just wonderful how Marvin Leonard King kept that seat on that bus. How brave of him. Moving on, Utter found on leather jacket. Although at first disgusted by the utter, 22-year-old Jamie Halstorm now finds it quite useful. He usually fills it with beer and serves drinks to his friends. Two days ago, he filled it with silly string and was comically thrown out of Ruby Tuesdays. Next up, cocaine smuggled inside teddy bear. Bear? Smuggled inside body cavity. That's right, Washington police Friday arrested a man on drug possession charges after cocaine was found stashed in a teddy bear. The teddy bear in turn stashed in the man's posterior. Officer Jose Lopez, first on the scene, said it was not immediately apparent that this was an arrestable offense. Though unfortunate, there's not anything illegal about cramming a child's stuffed toy in one's terminal orifice. He added, quote, We see a lot of crazy things out there. We aren't trained to judge a person's lifestyle, though. <sighs> what? No. Kind of leaves you philosophical. I, I need to go. I haven't seen an animal that unhappy since I watched the preparation of a turducken. It's five dollars I want back. Anyway, the man whose name has not yet been released stands by his testimony that while he suspected the adorable plush doll had shimmied its way up there, he had no idea the bear was involved in drug trafficking. Furthermore, he insists that the furry animal climbed into his person on its own accord. A defense that Shark Baby's own stuffed toy and anal smuggling specialist calls a little unlikely. I didn't, I didn't know we had an anal smuggling specialist. Did, did you know that? Well, yeah, we date. You, you date? What do you, what do you see in that guy? I don't know. He's kind of sweet, and he's always bringing me like little gifts. I, uh, I don't, I don't want to say how he transports them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Final story, pickle salesman devastated by run on pimentos and pomegranates at Alphabetical Farmer's Market. Wednesday in Merced, California, 63-year-old pickle salesman Dale Barnaby was emotionally traumatized by a freak run on pimentos and pomegranates at the alphabetically organized Farmer's Market on Main Street. Barnaby, nervously twitching, tears in his eyes, said, quote, I've been pushing pickles for damn near 40 years, and I've never seen anything like it. Pimentos and pomegranates on the same goddamn day? You gotta be shitting me. Cindy Jaron, a veteran pomelo saleswoman who also enjoyed Good Sales Wednesday, stated, quote, He just kept sadly muttering to the passing customers, The pickles are good. The pickles are good too. Try the pickles. Nothing like a crisp pickle after a juicy pomegranate. I tried to tell him that every fruit and vegetable has its day in the limelight, but he wasn't having it. Well, that's all for today. I'm Barely Legal Reporter, Liz Mealy. And I'm intrepid news hound, Lee Camp. This has been Shark Baby, excreting the news. Good night. And you're welcome, you pack of self-serving ingrates. Can you believe them?
What? Jesus. I, I thought they were nice. You're just, you're just as bad as them. I bet you slept with them. I bet you... Did you, did you sleep with them? You slut? <gasps> None of the news on Shark Baby is even remotely true. It's completely false. In fact, Lee and Khalees don't even really exist. Please tell friends to check out SharkBaby.com. They can remember the name by picturing a baby chasing down and eating 